just on my way to training, but I have to show you this. I mean, this is gonna be an introduction to me, so you might as well know what my favorite treat is at the moment. Honey stinger, stroop waffle heaven. I just couldn't decide on getting only one flavor, so I got like full boxes of all these. These I'm testing for the first time. Awesome, natural energy for training. Okay, I just noticed I'm definitely doing like a eye color coordination thing today. But yeah, so I'm on my way to go train and I asked you guys for some questions that I could answer in this video because this is supposed to be an introduction to me. It seems like it's gonna be a much harder task <laughs> than I thought it would be because one of the first questions you guys asked was how do you define yourself or do you define yourself at all? So first I'll just um, tell you some facts about myself, a bit of my timeline, how I ended up in mountaineering, what I've done before, how was my childhood and you know, all the basics. And then I asked my friends, some of the people who know me the best so my friends and family to define me in three to five words and I also asked for them to include one adjective where I would have room for improvement so let's see what they are I'm still waiting for some of the answers but we'll start with the first section now I had the Q&A box on my Instagram. If you don't follow me, go ahead, feel free to do that. And I got a lot of questions well, about mountaineering, about Ethiopia. I grew up in Ethiopia. Also one question was, where is the best coffee in the world? I'm a coffee addict and definitely Ethiopia. If you haven't tried a coffee ceremony yet, please do that. It's just, oh, so good. So questions about mountaineering, how did I get into it? What's my life like right now? How much do I train? What does my training week look like? What do I do for a living? Do I do something other than mountaineering? Mm, why did I change <laughs> from modeling to mountaineering, which actually I haven't done yet? Well, I do both, <laughs> so it's a good balance. But yeah, let's get started. As I mentioned, we lived in Ethiopia when I was a kid. So we lived there on two different occasions in the 90s. It was a very happy childhood. Um, my dad was a missionary doctor. So we lived first in the middle of the bush. So he was a doctor of a bush hospital. And I think that's where some of my biggest values have come from. One of the biggest purposes in my life is to find ways to help others. Yeah, just be, just do something important. Just to serve others with my life. I think that's what I'm trying to say. In the middle of the rainforest, I climbed banana trees. Uh, I played outside with boys. <laughs> there were two boys who lived on the same compound and just hung out with my sisters. My little brother wasn't born yet, so me and my two sisters. Oof, <laughs> yeah, we grew really close. When we moved to the capital city, we went to an English speaking school. Um, of course, I had lots of friends from school as well not only my sisters but we did play a lot together I played a lot of sports horseback riding um, taekwondo I was the fastest runner in our class <laughs> but on field day when we were competing my dad mom was there well both my mom and dad but my mom she was with a camera and we have a picture <laughs> me posing to the camera in the middle of the race and people passing me. So I think I was left so traumatized after that event that that's where my competitiveness came from. Might be some other reasons. 
uh, to blame for that as well. For example, my dad's competitiveness. Yeah, that's one of the qualities my both sisters do not like too much <laughs> because I can make anything into competition nowadays. Um, I, I played the jazz flute. I had a teacher over there, but I was never, I loved playing the flute. I come from a very musical family. My mom's a music teacher. Both of my sisters, they, the other plays violin and piano, and the other one plays violin and viola. So we have concerts <laughs> during Christmas. So we got back to Finland. Um, I continued in an international school. This is one of the reasons why I'm bilingual. I still speak, I speak Finglish <laughs> with my sisters. So Finnish and English. My little brother, he was so young when we lived in Ethiopia. He never went to school. So with him, it's mainly Finnish and with my parents, it's Finnish. But yeah, I started, or actually continued dancing. I was dancing already when I was in, we lived in Ethiopia and I started competing with that a little really feeding my competitive nerve. And then at the same time I started gymnastics, which is actually very beneficial for climbing. So having an understanding of how your body moves, how you control it, your balance, all of that, it's been very, very useful in, in climbing. And I think it's made me a fast learner. When I was 14, I combined dancing and gymnastics and got into cheerleading. I loved the stunts and the adrenaline and just the excitement before you go into a stunt and then you're kind of, you gotta focus really hard. Yep, became a competitive cheerleader. Competed on national level, trained about 20 hours a week and was just, Super into it. During our time in Ethiopia, we often flew past Kilimanjaro, so we were traveling around East Africa. And always when I saw the white top, I was like, I'm gonna climb there one day. And already then, our parents were taking us on hikes and climbing around the little mountains in Ethiopia. So it was kind of just a thing I really wanted to do. Towards the end of my cheerleading career, I got into long distance running. I had been, as I mentioned already, hiking all my life in both in Ethiopia, in Lapland, just anywhere. And I had noticed that I definitely have a gene for uh, long distance or endurance sports. And I mean, like when I was 17, I ran a marathon on a five minute notice and it wasn't even difficult. I know it's in my genes because my mom has really good endurance abilities. My big sister, she's an ultra runner. My little sister, she's definitely an ultra runner too. And my brother, he can just get off the couch and go for hours on end. So it's a family thing. <laughs> anyway, so I got out of high school. I had to quit cheerleading at the time. Uh, I went to volunteer in Africa, in Ethiopia again. After that, I've been volunteering in Uganda a couple of times. So that's something that definitely comes from my dad and from my mom as well. They want to serve people. That's what, what they dedicate their lives to. So I had a gap year, I was working, uh, I worked in a candy store. <laughs> I started there when I was in high school and continued after my gap year. And pretty soon I was hired <laughs> to work in a shoe store because I just used my entire salary on shoes every time I <laughs> got paid from the candy store. And while I was shopping for shoes, I actually ended up selling shoes for, for the other customers that were in the store. So I was ended, where they ended up, 
asking me to work there so that I would actually get paid for selling the shoes to the other customers. And there started my career as a uh, shoe store manager. Or I got that position after about a year. I was also studying international business and entrepreneurship at the time. So I was pretty much not enjoying student parties. I was working full time, studying full time, and then trying to train and work as a freelance model at the same time. So I didn't have a life. By the fall of 2012, um, I felt like it was time to focus only on my studies because I also felt like I wasn't really challenging myself enough as a store manager anymore. So I quit my job and started my master's program in the Ivaskova School of Business and Economics. Then in 2013, spring, I went to visit a modeling agency where they told me they think I would be a good Miss Finland. <laughs> so a day before pre-casting, I had missed out on the application process. They called me and told me that I should go to the pre-casting where they might choose a few wild cards for the casting process where they had invited 50 people already. So I was like, eh, okay. Because my grandma had told me when I was eight that Lotus is going to be at Miss Finland one day. So I was like, huh, let's see. Jumped on the train, went to the pre-casting, got through to casting, and through to semifinals. Had three weeks time to prepare, did a shitload, sorry, pardon my language, <laughs> did a lot of schoolwork, finishing courses for the spring in case I was picked for a month long Miss Finland tour, and then got through to the finals, went through a month of a Miss Finland tour, and won. <clears throat> I will include a picture here of my reaction. You can also Google it, but I was definitely not thinking I would be winning. <laughs> All the girls had like enormous amounts of experience, and I was just plucked from purity, not knowing a thing about how to do a pageant, but turned out fine. <laughs> there I was, Miss Finland, not knowing what to do, having a huge identity crisis, trying to do my job well, became an entrepreneur overnight, I still had my studies. So I have to say that the next years after that are a bit of a blur in my head, because I just remember I don't know, somehow I didn't fit, my personality didn't fit into the Miss Finland mold, even though I, I like dressing up, I like, I learned how to use makeup, even though <laughs> in my Instagram currently about 95% of my photos are with no makeup whatsoever, like now, <laughs> but still, it, it was like, it was intriguing, it was fun, I loved modeling, it was a big challenge for me. I still always enjoy photo shoots, I do them occasionally, I love the TV work. So, so I ended up doing quite a few TV series. My favorites so far have been Dancing with the Stars and Survivors. Survivors was so awesome. I mean, I loved the life. It was actually pretty easy to be on a deserted island with no food, but the competitions, they were so much fun. Yeah, that's what my life came about. But at the same time, I was still, I was hiking a lot. I was climbing little mountains. I was just intrigued by the mountains. Something that I inherited from Ethiopia and somehow just very organically I uh, got into climbing bigger or harder stuff. I had been taking some technique lessons, doing some sport climbing. So yeah, everything just happened very organically. Kilimanjaro ended up being one of my first higher mountains. This was in 2016 when my 
dad had been diagnosed with cancer and we had been planning to do Kilimanjaro with him and but eventually that year he died of cancer but I I was able to show him what it was like to climb it and make part of our dream come true but that got me hooked I was apparently genetically predisposed to do that stuff too so I didn't have problems with the altitude and just enjoyed myself enormously enjoyed the challenge I liked the because anyway like if you go to altitude you're gonna suffer <laughs> so I love the part about feeling bad and pushing through the pain and kind of just as my current coach calls it sitting in humanity that's how I sort of started climbing in 2018 I was like okay I'm not gonna have any guides for the bigger mountains anymore I want to do this by myself <laughs> what could go wrong and convinced one of my friends Marida that we should go to Aconcagua and somehow we ended up telling about our plans to Don Bowie. Some of you guys might know my current climbing partner and he was like about 30 years more experienced than we are <laughs> where we were so because he had some projects going on on Aconcagua some speed related stuff he was like okay I need to go research that mountain if you guys want I can come and be part of your climbing team and we're like mm, okay as long as you don't try to be your guide and he was like no way you guys are um apprenticing at the most and that's actually one of my tips best tips if you want to start climbing find someone who's more experienced and apprentice with them that's how you actually learn the best as he says it i floated <laughs> at Concagua and apparently he was pretty impressed it was a tough year not many summits we're stuck in a storm the only ones to summit that day my friend unfortunately she had lung issues so she wasn't able to join us for the summit but Don pretty much told me that I don't care who you climb with, but you gotta start climbing seriously. That there is so much potential if we start working on it that he would like to coach me. And I figured out that if I organize a few things regarding my work a little differently, I can start training full time. And ever since then, I have been prioritizing climbing and training as my number one work. So first and foremost, still feels unbelievable to say this, but I'm a climber. On the side, I do still modeling, entertainment business, TV work and such, but I'm just so fascinated by the climbing world and what it offers so grateful that I can do it full time and be coached by the best who is also my climbing partner we've been climbing in the Himalayas um, in Colorado in California in Pakistan we did two 8,000 meter attempts there um, Gasha Room 2 in the summer um, Italian unfortunately had an accident and that was on our summit day so I had to go rescue him instead of us doing the summit oh yeah and our other mountain was broad peak in the winter with Dennis Rubko also I feel like it was successful but we did not summit very important for my learning curve but still I'm bummed out <laughs> about us getting so sick that we had to be evacuated especially Don he had pneumonia so we had to be evacuated from from base camp so yeah that's 
what's happening now. I was, you guys also asked, where do I live? <laughs> I'm training in Colorado and climbing here right now. <laughs> but my stuff is mainly in the storage in Helsinki. So I don't know where I live. <laughs> around the world and I'm happy that way. I'm happy to be a nomad. Go on adventures. <laughs> yeah. You guys were also asking about my future plans. So, for example, am I planning to climb Everest without oxygen? So if you've been following my climbing, I climb only without oxygen because I just feel like it takes away from the purity of the sport because it does enhance your performance to such a great extent. So if you can't climb a mountain on its own terms, don't bring the mountain down. Anyway, so yes, I will climb it someday, hopefully, but I want to have a sufficient skill set that I can do an alternative route. So. My philosophy towards climbing is that I want to do stuff that is an adventure on its own rather than doing just the conventional routes or the summit isn't my only goal. My goal is to have an awesome adventure between the minute I leave home until the summit of the mountain. Everything in between that is my ultimate goal, <laughs> enjoying that part. And that's where my future plans are. Right now, because of the coronavirus, I can't really commit 100% to anything. But as soon as it seems like the borders will start opening, I've got plans, you'll see. Also, I was asked, what I will do when I retire. <laughs> Maybe that's the time I will start my, using my uh, education, my economist papers. <laughs> Let's see. But currently, I'm still an entrepreneur, so they're useful. Definitely happy about graduating from that school. <sighs> okay, so. That was a bit longer warm up than I intended, but I will have a bit of a strength training session now. Oh yeah, one of your questions was, how much do I train per week? So it differs depending on the week, where we are on, hey bird, <laughs> on the ramp of increasing the volume of exercise for training. So it differs between 15 to 30 hours a week. And Lots of endurance training. Uh, in my activation before my training, I usually do a bit of strength training. Then technique stuff. The more I get into the mountains, the more I can train technique as well. But I do have a technique coach back in Finland as well. Enni. So it is quite a bit of training, but that's my priority in life right now. Other than family and other values, of course. But as my work priority. I'll get back to training and I'll get back to you guys in right now from here. You'll see what my friends <laughs> say about me. Okay, so done with training, shower, eating. Oh, I was so hungry. And now I'm back here for you guys. So this portion of the video will be me through the eyes of my friends. I know that media has definitely probably, well, impacted the opinions of many of you. The TV shows, the tabloids, especially the tabloids, the articles, but then also my own social media. And those of you who don't live in Finland, you probably have never seen an article about me. So maybe you formed an opinion based on my Instagram. But also that is just like a slight little glimpse of my real life or who I am. So. Who better ask than my best friends and family? And I am sorry if you consider yourself one of my best friends and you are not on this list. I just sent messages to the ones who I've been texting with lately. So we will start with Haiti. Haiti is one of my best friends. I met her in high school and we're both wearing pink. 
So this is what Haiti says about me. I'm a doer versus a thinker. Annoyingly beautiful, that's what she always says, but she's gorgeous herself. Tenacious, focused. Sporty Duracell bunny, she's good with words. <laughs> Humble and doesn't quit. Next we have, oh, by the way, I would like to remind you that all my friends are biased. So when you hear these opinions, you have to understand that they might not be entirely correct. Yanni, she says I'm independent, stubborn. I also asked them to include one adjective that is an area where I would have room for improvement. So that's Yanni's version of that. Adventurous, loyal, honest. I love it that my friends consider me loyal. So yeah, so the task was to um, describe me, me with three to five words and one of them can be one where I have room for improvement. But because these are my friends, <laughs> they didn't exactly all the time stick to the assignment. Here is Emilia's list. Definitely not three to five. Emilia was one of my employees when I was store manager and we just hit it off very well. Oh, I want to tell me and mine and Yanni's story too. So Yanni is probably one of the most followed uh, media personalities in Finland and she's also super athletic so we've bonded over that um we've also both did done huge career changes we understand each other when it comes to uh being in the public eye so yeah she's definitely one of my best friends and emilia the one who doesn't stick to the given assignment <laughs> to the guidelines um she was one of my employees when I was a store manager in the shoe store, Bianco. And she just is so similar to me. So we've, we're really, really good friends and we've become super good friends after I quit there. Also very, very athletic. She's a skier. They've got great lungs. She says I'm loyal, empathetic, has a big... I <laughs> has a big heart, genuine, determined, smart, brave, adventurous, inspiring, daredevil, good in everything. She's definitely exaggerating. Mm, best company in the world. And her improvement idea was that I don't cut myself slack. So that's true. I might I usually quit after I have a burnout or hit a wall. Griselda. We met after I was crowned a Miss Finland. I worked quite a bit with her. She is a stylist. So we've definitely bonded over fashion and clothes and she just has a beautiful soul. Criselda says that I am brave. I have a good heart. I'm beautiful, spontaneous. She might refer to maybe me going to Miss Finland pageant on a spur of a moment type of stuff or maybe the fact that I've got five tattoos and nine piercings out of which I have maybe planned to have two so she says that I'm also genuine and sincere Marida we've been on quite a few adventures we did um, 27 hours in a row hike and she was with me on Aconcagua so such a beautiful person inside and out she says that i have good values i'm tenacious i'm loyal i've got emotional intelligence and i'm crazy so i guess the crazy is the improvement but <laughs> i think it's good to be a little crazy sometimes but yeah definitely when you're on an expedition you get to know the other person really well and you end up having these emotionally intelligent conversations sometimes less intelligent but still you know my big sister so she's basically the one who raised me sorry mom but i did everything that she did except i was like the bad version of her <laughs> she's just amazing she's one of my biggest role models and best friends she says i have a big good pure heart and persevering so referring to finnish sisu which is the kind of 
characteristic that is said to have uh, kept Finland independent throughout wars with Russia. And she says, I'm smart. Don, my coach and my climbing partner. So we've spent a lot of time together and he's got big words. So I was like, when he sent me this list, I was like, not sure what half of them meant. I'm no, just kidding. But yeah, he says I'm multifaceted, undeterred, genuine, boundless, misinterpreted. I think he's referring to some media articles that have been written about me and people sticking to the stamp of Miss Finland and that I can't do um, men's stuff. I can't climb. And he says I'm playful. He's the only person or only one of my friends who thinks I'm funny in some way. Nora Ratu. So there's two Noras, that's why she gets an R. She's one of the best goalies on earth. And we had such a similar mindset when we met on Survivors. She was in my tribe and we bonded. Made an alliance as well, but that one didn't go very far. She says I'm natural. I'm not sure if she refers to this, not wearing makeup or how I behave or I'll take that anyway. I like it. Um, trustworthy, determined, reckless. Apparently that's where I've got room to improve, room for improvement and it throws herself into things fully. So when I jump into something, I go there head first. <laughs> My mom. Okay, so this, I got her in a family chat. So everyone kind of um, agreed with each other. So I got only a few words from her. She says persevering and gutsy and smart. Mm. Hannes, we met on this TV show in Lapland. So he's pretty much one of the people who kept me alive when I was maybe a little reckless at times. Among other things, I hit a tree on a canoe when I was coming down a hill. So yeah, on snow, almost died. He says, I'm brave, determined, fearless, genuine, and my problem is that I don't admit when I'm exhausted. So I do have some issues with that, not asking for help on time. No, on my little sis. So I saved this one last because I love that word the most. Um, she says, I'm generous. I have a big heart. I'm brave. I'm analytical and I'm love. I feel very loved after reading all these. And yeah. I'm happy you stayed here for this introduction. I do think that we all change and um, this is an introduction for current moment, but maybe I'll need another one later on. I hope you'll stay on my journey and follow what's going on. Of course, this was also only a scratch of the surface, but hope to get to know you also better and to know me a little better in the future so cheers with coffee i promise i'll accept you even if you're a tea person bye <laughs>